All right, I said I was going to put together a tutorial, so here we go. This is the first tutorial of hopefully many. All right, so I just want to go ahead and show you the textures that I'm working with here. This is just basically a grunge map uh, right here. It's just another detailed map that we can go ahead and use. This is actually going to be the wood, uh, our wood base that we're going to uh, build our crates out of. And this was kind of like an extra detailed map. And right away we can see that the file size, or not the file size, but the image size is a little bit different. All these images here are 512 by 512. And this guy is probably 600 by 600. So I'm going to have to go ahead and correct that later on. All right, so starting with that, I pulled these texture maps from cgtextures.com. A uh, great site for, I mean, it is just tons of texture maps from, you know, glass, bricks, metal, you name it, it's pretty much there. All right, so the number one thing we have to do right now is to correct this uh, wood rough specular te texture map. So I'm going to go ahead and bring that into Photoshop. And we're just going to save this, or let's just change the image size, 72, yeah, so it was 640, we want it to be 512. We need things to be in uh, intervals of, you know, 32 by 32, 64, 128, 512, 1024, and you can actually mix things up. You can have an image, or you can have a file that's 512 by 128, but as long as you're in these increments, then the editor is going to recognize it and everything is going to import okay. So, all right, we made that change. Everything is good. We're just going to save right over. All right, now what I did right here, I kind of did that kind of quickly. I'm in, uh, let's cancel this. When you download the editor, you're going to go ahead and get plugins for Macs, plugins for Maya, plugins for Photoshop. This is one of the plugins for Photoshop, and it's actually, uh, you're saving it as a TIFF file, but it's a Cry TIFF plugin. So I'm going to save it, and it just gives you a handful of options. This is going to be, uh, actually, it's going to be a specular map. So I can come here and check, and it's, it's a low-quality specular map. So I can go ahead and get that. Just check low quality, and it just makes sure that the map is actually optimized and set up to best run inside of your editor. Hit OK. All right, so now that we've done that, we're going to move on to, let's see. All right, we're going to minimize this. And we've already shown our models and everything. And let's go ahead and open up Max. So we got 3D Studio Max running here, and I made these basic, you know, I mean, it's just a really basic shape or crate made out of just a box. It's actually started off with, you know, this guy here, and I just moved and shaped them until we had these three different crates here. And we're going to go ahead and texture map those crates right now using the materials. You know, to actually jump a step. We got to do our, our uh, file setup. So let's go ahead and get ready for our file setup. Okay, so these are all of our base textures. I'm going to drop them into this folder here. Okay, so in here is where I'm housing everything. This is the max file. This is the target file, which I'll show you where that came from in a, in a moment. And these are all normal maps and specular map files that were created using Crazy Bump or just adjusting some levels inside of Photoshop. So let's start with Let's just start with the uh, rough wood spec because this guy here is 512. This, these two are the same, but I'm going to go ahead and start here. and We're going to open up Crazy Bump. So Crazy Bump is this incredible program that's going to go ahead and take your base image and apply a, a normal map filter to it. So let's grab that. My files, wood. Let's find it. Rough spec. Alright. So, right here you can see this is what Crazy Pump has kind of done. It's went ahead and taken that <laughs> simple image 
and it's giving us a uh, roughly it's giving us a real time preview of what it could look like inside of a game editor with normal mapping applied, with specular applied, with a uh, uh, parallax displacement applied, and, and, and so on. So let's. And the one thing you'll also notice is that I can go ahead and just change this to a box. And we can kind of see what it looked like on a crate. So that's a bit heavy, I think, for that type of detail, especially for something that's going to be tiled down. It's just that that's something that's kind of heavy for like a wall or so. So I would immediately go into my normal properties and I would just set this to maybe about 20. All right, so that pulled back a lot of that uh, parallax displacement and the normal like value. And that's another thing here. We turn off parallax displacement, and it flattens out a lot. And we can kind of move our light around and we can see. So let's take you back up to about 25%. All right. And I, I think that's pretty good for what I need. All right. Um, this is going to explain where that Targa file came from. The editor, and a lot of times you can do this with UDK or with the CryEngine and probably other editors as well, they'll pull displacement information from your normal map channel. And basically it stores this information here. It'll store that inside of the alpha channel of your normal map. And that is done by going into your save normals with displacement so we click check there hit OK and when we save this file this displacement map will be saved into the normal channel and we don't need that for this map but if you see this material or this normal map right here has this you know kinda like a haze of white in there let's go back into Photoshop and you will see that when I go to my channels this was my normal map for it and turn these off this is a displacement map that's saved in there so that's just it's just a, uh, allowing you to kind of have multiple uh, maps inside of one actual texture map and you can use it for have multi purposes All right so after we finish with uh, our crazy bump we would then save out our normal map we would import all of our textures and we would just save out a normal map as we needed, save out a specular map, and so on. I didn't do this specular map here inside of Crazy Bump. I went into Photoshop and I just pulled the uh, color out of our base image here, and I just did some level adjustments to get this. I, for me, this works a little bit better. So, and again, this right here was just something in Photoshop. Again, I want to go ahead and have this bit of a noise pattern. I'm not sure if I'm going to use it or not, but it's just nice to have. This is just extra detail. If I want to go ahead and give the wood just a little, uh, a little more grain to it, that's there. And again, uh, kind of similar to the, no uh, the noise map. Not sure if I'm going to use it or not, but I think it's going to help just having it. Whenever you save out of Crazy Bump and you save the normal channel with the displacement in it, Crazy Bump will only save a Targa file. And that's where this Targa file came from. I then had to open this up save it out as a TIFF file and now crisis will import that file okay so now we're going to do uh, so we can go ahead and close crazy bump and we have to drop this information here into crisis so it will so we'll be able to use the texture maps and you actually want to set it up inside of their crisis folder and everything it won't look for something on your desktop it won't look for something in some other folder it's actually looking inside of the engine and it won't look outside of the engine for anything including your max file so when you're working on your max file you want to work and save everything to this folder as well so I know it's going to be my files and I just have wood right now and that folder is on the desktop All right so you go start my computer C drive Go to your program files, electronic arts, crisis, cry 2, and you're looking for game crisis 2. Now, we're saving it into the objects pack. There is no object. Like, we can go ahead and extract this using like a WinRAR or WinZip, 
we don't need to do that just right click new folder objects we're good there and we're just gonna go ahead and copy this file right in there so now the game will go ahead and look up at it going through here to find my objects folder which is they're roughly the exact same thing this objects folder and this objects folder they're kind of sharing space but it's objects so it's going to read this and this at the same time so it's going to go in there and now all my materials my maps everything is going to be pulled from that location and just to clean things up a bit this is wood underscore base that's very important I'm going to go file save as and I'm actually going to find it right now it's pulling it from the desktop I don't want to do that I want to go again to that crisis folder that we just made in our objects wood I'm going to save it here it when you try to export out of the engine it will not it will not let you move forward until you save your max file in the actual uh, subfolder that you're working from it helps because you're always going to have your max file in the exact same location that your textures and everything you work so you ever have to go back and edit anything it's there for you okay so now we can go and just kind of texture map these boxes let's just for the sake of this tutorial I want to do two I don't want to spend too much time so we can just do one I think it's going to be quick and easy though okay so first things first as you can see that we made a sub object material you know what I'm going to do I'm going to start over so let's just kill that and you let's just do that there okay first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a multi sub object material okay we're going to discard all the old information and here we are okay we're going to name this the exact same name as the max file it's going to make it easier for whenever we name out our material it's going to make it easier for the editor to go ahead and say okay we found the folder we found the files we found everything the naming convention is key so it's going to be wood base all right that's the first thing if you don't do this you will have issues wood base wood base we know it's all there we're going to set number of materials right now we're only going to use two we really only have one material in the scene but your second material is going to be a proxy your proxy is going to help you because when the editor is trying to read this for collisions it's going to read each and every one of these faces and that's going to go ahead and just uh, be a very expensive task on your engine so you make a collision mesh and you call that the proxy mesh and now it's going to read this simple box over this and then now objects can collide into it and so on you won't go through it so we just need two. All right, the first one we're just going to call it wood underscore base. I didn't have to call it wood base. I'm just doing that. But number two is definitely going to be proxy. All right, copying this wood base, we're going to get a standard material with our standard material again. Wood base. Now this could be let's let's just show you. It, it could just be wood. It can be crate. So, uh, create, okay, and drop down Crytek shader. And again, if we physicalize this, then it's going to use this actual edge. It's going to use the edges of the material that's applied here for your collision properties. We don't want to do that. Again, it's a very expensive task. So we're going to leave that as default. Go to our mapping channel, check on diffuse bitmap and let's find let's go back into our C drive electronic arts this is two game I should have a shortcut for this it's a long process all right and we just want our wood underscore diffuse and go with that okay and that's set right now so this guy's good we know it's not physicalized we're gonna save that for the proxy and we're good I could go through and add the specular channel and and so on you know what let's just do that let's kind of get it out the way all right let's add our specular map right there okay 